Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be painting the Chieftain Mark X using, as usual, AK Paints. Specifically these three, because we're going to be painting it in the very unique Berlin Urban Camo. Of course, using my Pache airbrush. As well, we're also going to be painting the extra little details and getting all of them fitted up to the model. To start out with, we're, we are going to be gluing on all of the little 3D printed details onto some skewers just so they can easily be held while we paint them and airbrush them and get all of that done. And this is very simple, I just use some super glue using a little amount of it and gluing it on. So once those are all glued on, we can start off by primering all of the 3D prints as well as primering all of the individual parts for the tank. I took off all the wheels and put them on skewers as well. This really just makes it easy to get at all those parts and get into the areas you really wouldn't be able to while they're still on the tank. After it's all primered, we're of course going to be masking off that very interesting and unique Berlin camo scheme. Now this camo scheme was used in Berlin, but the British army really just considers it a urban camo scheme and they've kind of used it off and on throughout the years. So this camo scheme is really blocky and has some of course very unique colors to it that isn't usually used on tanks and stuff like that. So it makes for a bit of an interesting and unique masking process where you really want to make sure you are masking up and covering areas in very defined clear lines. After we get all those clear lines and everything masked up, we're of course going to be masking off all of the underside of the tank because all of that on this tank just stays in a nice gray color, which I sprayed over top of the primer, but since it was spraying gray over top of gray primer, I didn't really record it because you couldn't really see any difference. But we're going to then mask off all those major areas, of course masking off the big parts like the gun and the turret parts just to make it all good. After we get all of those masked up, we can start off by doing the white layer of this camo. Just going through, spraying it on, making sure to get very nice even coats, but also making sure to get into all of the little crooks and little deep details that this kit has, because it has a lot of them. And this part really took a while to do, but once it all came out good, this tank came out looking really good, so it was worth it. But now that we have all that sprayed, we can continue to get some pieces sprayed up here and move along. So now that we have all of the white areas painted up, we are going to of course be masking over them and getting ready for that brown layer of this camo. Of course it being the three parts of this camo. So, this area was actually a lot easier than masking up the white because most of those hard to get details had already been masked over. But you just go through making sure, you can see here I'm using a little plastic push stick, I don't even know where I got this, I've just had them laying around for a while, but they really help just kind of pushing in and covering up things like that. And of course once the small areas are nice and finely detailed going over with a bigger normal piece of masking tape just to mask it up and of course cutting off the back areas just so we can put it on a stick like all the rest of it. So once it's all masked up we're of course going to go in and start painting up all of the brown areas. Now this area really is kind of the biggest transformation of this kit because the white on grey really doesn't look like much but spraying them all on making it look good and this kit really came out nice with this color scheme. Now you can see here, I was really getting into all those areas, making sure to get nice even coats covering the whole kit and all of those areas because this brown does show a fair bit if you don't have very even coats. So using very thin coats and going over many times, letting it dry in between, because it's airbrushing, it dries pretty quick, but that's pretty much it. Then we're on to the biggest area of this kit, the big back deck, which in all the pictures I've found is just completely brown. I'm not exactly sure why they did this on the tanks. Maybe it's just easier, or maybe this was a primer color and they just left them like that. But with these vents, really making sure to get light coats, just kind of dusting over them so you don't clog up any of the areas on those major vents because they can get clogged up with paint really easily. So, continuing on, really getting all of those areas good and painted up. After that, 
we are on to probably the best part about painting a camel job on a paint is pulling off all of that masking tape and revealing a really cool camel pattern underneath. So, of course, we're just going to peel off all that masking tape, get it all off. Of course, being careful not to damage or rip off any parts of the kit while you're doing this, but if you're making sure to be careful with that and not getting too overenthusiastic with it, it comes out real good, and you get to finally see what all of that painstaking hours of masking has achieved and that really cool camo scheme. So, just yanking off all those bits here, and once that's done, we'll be left with the kit really nice and ready to go on for the other details. Now, of course, moving into the other details that are going on this kit, and I decided to paint all of these parts in just a very wide assortment of other colors. So this is just a dark army green, probably left over from the Object 279 build last time, so go and check that video out if you want. But just spraying them all on and getting all of these little detail parts sprayed up in different colors. This canister of gas for the welder that I'm putting on the kit, and I'm just spraying it a nice blue. I say just to add a lot of variance to this kit, we're spraying the welder in a similar blue with masking off a line of red just to make it look a little bit different and not just something completely bland. Now, when we put these pieces on the model, they're going to look a little bit weird because they're going to look such different colors. But with weathering in the next episode, we'll be getting them all kind of tied in and looking really like they belong on this kit. Then we're going to be moving on to the little extra parts of track that I'm kind of going to be draping over the turret and everything. And of course, just painting those in a nice black like the rest of the tracks, as we can see here. Now, these tracks are very nice. I call them some of the coolest tracks I've ever worked with in a previous episode of this build. But they are not great for painting because they don't really like to move that much once they've got some paint on them. But you do really need to kind of twist and turn them to get all of the areas painted. But once you go through that, it's really easy to get them looking nice. And with a little bit of weathering, we'll kind of cover them up. So now we're going to move on to pulling off all of those little bits off of these sticks so we can get everything put onto the model. Then, now that the painting is all done on this kit and we have everything done, we are going to be pulling off all of that liquid masking tape we did in, a, in the previous video, getting all of those nice clear areas showing off and looking great and pulling off, of course, the biggest piece there from that big infrared light and revealing the really cool interior that this kit has for that little bit. Then we're going to be moving on to putting all of these road wheels on and throwing them on. This, of course, is a very fun process and we can speed things up just a little bit. Now that all those wheels are on, we're going to be, of course, getting on to putting the tracks onto this kit. Now, this part was a little bit more difficult because you can't use that nice handy jig that you do to assemble the rest of the tracks. So, I ended up just kind of pushing it together for this one side and then putting the pin in it. Now, that's what I thought I was going to do, but the pin kind of decided to break off inside of it and snap the track link. So, I end up gluing just this one track link together. It'll kind of affect the movability and rotatability of these tracks, but it won't really affect the model too much in the end. So now with those tracks on, we're of course going to get these side panels on, which look really good. I was originally going to magnetize these, but the area to magnetize them to would be very thin and it would be very difficult to do, so I decided just to glue them on and it'll look fine. Then we're going to be moving on to putting on all of these 3D printed and painted now details into the stowage baskets and all over this kit, making it look really cool and adding of course that unique custom touch that adding any stowage bits or details really do add for a kit, especially little 3D printed ones like this. Just so we're going to throw on the little welder and all of its tanks as well as these track bits which I think really add a nice little feature to this kit. Then we're going to throw on this little storage crate onto the back deck here just to add more detail, not to just the turret, but also the body of the tank. Then we're going to move on to painting up and adding in some of the little other details on this kit. 
Now these rails on the back here are kind of a rubberized piece. I believe they are rubberized and there as kind of a buffer area so the turret or the barrel don't end up damaging or hitting the bar. They just kind of ride, ride along these little rubber areas as far as I know. If they're not, tell me in the comments if they are something different though. So those will get painted up as well as the machine gun on the top of the commander's hatch getting it nice and painted up just so it looks black and different from the rest of the kit really showing off the little details to it. Then we're going to go on to adding the little decals and other pieces to this kit. Now this kit has a lot of really nice decals as you can see here a very nice very small little British Union Jack just to go on the front of the kit and we'll be doing that just with some decal setting fluid and then just kind of rubbing it in and setting it down with a q-tip and of course doing the same on the back with all of the other little pieces that need to go on there and will need to go and same process just kind of throwing them on now these major ones on the back these kind of warning decals really look cool but they are very difficult to put on because they go over a lot of bumps and a lot of ridges on those back crates they take a fair bit of kind of pushing and maneuvering and i just went over them multiple times with my decal setting fluid as well as some q-tips and some fine tipped q-tips just really pushing them into place and pushing them down as you can see here and over time with over a few layers and a few coats of decal setting fluid as well as decal softening fluid they did form up and fit well enough to get everything good. So that finishes up the episode for this week. The kit is looking really good and I think with all that camo job it came out really well. So remember to like if you like this video and like this build and remember to subscribe if you want to see the upcoming videos where we do all of the weathering and tying all of these pieces together on this kit. I think it'll come out really good and we'll be able to make this kit look like it was really fighting in an urban environment and making use of that urban camo. So, have a good one. See you in the next one.